How's it going friends and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we are going to be looking at Eddard's 148 P51 Mustang. Now this one is a commission build but it's an actual kit I've been wanting to do. Uh, this one I am basing it on the, the uh, box art which is Frenzy. I have done a uh, 30 second scale uh, version of this and absolutely loved it. And have actually wanted to do uh, a 48th one. Uh, but haven't got around to it but this one was sent to me uh, as, as a commission uh, so we're going to be looking at that it's going to be a full build uh, video so stick around to the end to see the finished model so that's what we're going to be doing this video and what you need to be doing is grabbing yourself a brewery and bicky kicking back and enjoying this video so i'll catch you again in a moment or maybe 20 minutes I'm sure many of you by now probably know that I'm a big, massive fanboy of Eddard. They do some absolutely amazing kits and amazing detail. And the Mustang has been one of those kits I've been wanting to get my hands on for quite a while. And they really haven't disappointed with this kit. Now, the Mustang obviously is a massive bubble canopy and you can see a lot inside the cockpit. And Eddard have done an absolute amazing job at detailing all this stuff that goes into it, from down to the seat, all the way through, you know, from the small details that sit on the fuel tank uh, just behind the pilot's seat. And it's great that they've put this level of detail into the cockpit because, of course, you know, like I said, being that bubble canopy, you know, all this is extremely visible. Now, if you want to, you could easily add a little bit of wiring uh, in there for, um, you know, some of the cabling that goes through. Um, but, I mean, that's entirely up to you. I didn't in the case of this one, but I did in a previous one. I did in 32nd uh, scale. Now for the cockpit walls, there's a few little details that need to go in because um, of course this is the profile pack, comes with some photo etch parts. Now some of these parts that have got the photo etch on are like dials and instruments. They will need to be uh, shaved off to put the um, photo etch parts on. As you can see at the start of this little segment, I've uh, decided instead of trying to clear it, I've just got a bit of styrene card uh, just to you know, make the shape up and put it in to give that raised um, detail for when the photo etch goes on. So once the cockpit's all painted, we can then start putting our photo etch detail on. It's quite a simple process of putting some super glue down and then your photo etch part on top. What's also quite good to do uh, before doing this is on the back of the photo etch part with a bit of uh, fairly coarse uh, sandpaper or sanding stick just rough the edge up um, at the back a little bit this will help uh, adhesion to the model and with that all the photo etch put into place with the seat belts identification plates and the instrument panel which is amazingly detailed uh, on these newer edar kits the cockpit is done and is ready to be glued into place now where those fits normally are really, really good. And to be fair, this one wasn't overly bad, but just where that intake section was there, I need to fill out a little bit and send it off. But other than that, general fit of this actually goes together really, really nicely. The Willwell assembly of this is made of quite a few parts. Obviously you've got the main structure here and we've also got some of the uh, sort of supporting areas that's going, which I actually forgot to put in. I had to try and fit these in a little bit later on. But the detailing of this, just this area alone is absolutely, you know, fantastically um, modeled. Uh, it's super detail um, without needing to actually need to buy a resin kit upgrade for it's quite happily you know put together and you know put straight into the model also please ignore steve there from quality control he, he drops in from time to time and sometimes just gets in the way so when it comes to fitting the wheel well into the lower half of the wing it just fits pretty much perfectly um we do need to sort of um, push the wings slightly up but it's literally marginal uh, just to get this to fit um, perfectly and smoothly but other than that it's it just fits perfectly 
Now, something you don't usually see in uh, kits, particularly around the uh, ejection slip area, Edard have actually given you a small little plate uh, to go in there that sort of simulates the uh, gun barrels and the ejector slips, which glues in really nicely and just adds a little bit more depth to that area. Again, Steve, getting in the way, um, it's really starting to get annoying. Uh, I might have to go to HR about this. It's just hindering my work. Once Steve was finally out of my way, I was able to put the uh, wings on. These fitted relatively well. There was a little bit of uh, push out uh, at the front, but generally fits really nicely. You can see the gap between the wing and the fuselage is barely existent. It fits really, really nicely and nice and snug. There was still a few uh, couple of sort of seam lines that I need to fill out, but they, again, were no real big issue. And the gun barrels also slot in really nicely in the leading edge of the wing without any sort of gaps. One thing I will say about Eddard, it makes it really difficult to narrate these videos uh, because there's not really much I can tell you apart from that they are, you know, as I always say, amazingly detailed and fit really nicely. Which in that said leads us on to probably the more interesting part of the build, which is painting it. Now what I've done is obviously I've based it in uh, black primer. I've also used a spare canopy to uh, cover the cockpit so I haven't got to worry about masking um, that area off. I've also uh, done some uh, pre-shading on this just for something a little bit different um, and add a little bit of mottling underneath the paintwork. For the top half, I actually used a bit of yellow to make uh, a little bit of a faded look um, on the upper surface. I also then uh, had already painted all the white lines and masked them off before doing this because it was going to be a lot easier to do uh, that before uh, painting the rest of the model. The decals are really good. Um, they are extremely thin and quite uh, fragile, so do be very careful with putting these on. They do come with a carrier film uh, over the top of these decals, which you can uh, remove, but you've got to be very, very careful. You need to make sure the decals are um, properly stuck on using uh, any sort of uh, decal softeners, but make sure that you, you know, wick away any uh, liquids that are underneath, because once you try and pull it off, some of the decal will come with it as well. The easiest way of removing this is actually just using a little bit of masking tape to try and get some of the film to come off and then removing it, the rest of it, with a pair of tweezers, but again, doing it very gently. Now, one thing I was quite really extremely happy with uh, on this one compared to the 30 second version I did, the yellow decals um, stay nice and bright. The ones I used previously from a, a, a manufacturer, I can't remember, I think it was Eagle Cal. Um, they were very thin and, you know, they just dulled down um, when you put the decal over the olive drab. Once all the decals were done, I gave everything a nice couple of layers of gloss varnish and then moved on to panel lining. Now I've gone with my old favourite, which is Tamiya's accent panel liner. I'm using the dark brown, which again is pretty much the one I always use. Once I've got everything covered, I come in with a moistened brush with some uh, enamel thinners on and removed all the excess um, out of the flat areas and pushing it into all the creases. I do leave some of this uh, on the flatter areas because it kind of gives it a little bit of a filter and also makes it look a little bit dirty, particularly on areas like these, which obviously the will well, will well doors, um, you know, just to give them that more of a, you know, long term use and dirty looking. Once that's all done, I move on to my favourite part of weathering, which is the chipping. Now, I'm doing this all by hand using Ammo's flat aluminium. Any flat aluminium will do, really. Um, you know, hitting all the areas that are going to be, you know, obviously the most used. That's going to be areas like walkways, engine panels, any sort of little uh, covers, even like obviously, like on this, the gun bays. They're going to be opened up and, and, you know, messed around with and maintained a lot. So, those are the sort of areas that you're going to want to be looking at to be chipped. 
Now this is something that I think is quite easily done. Most of it is common sense, but if you are struggling with uh, certain things, just go onto the internet and just search some old photos of the aircraft. So as we move on to the fuel caps and uh, some sort of fuel runoff when they've been refueled, I've used 502 Abtai Lung engine grease. Now, of course, obviously it's not engine grease, but I felt this color actually works really well as a fuel stain. So what I've done is I've put it onto a piece of car to get some of the uh, linseed oil out and put it onto the model and using some odorless thinners just to drag that out and make it look like the airflow has caught any you know, residue of fuel after refueling. I also use the same for some actual oil stains around the engine cowls. I also use the same process on the flaps using their sepia just to simulate some, you know, sort of oil and grease and just general dirt coming from the flaps. And the very last thing I did was add a couple of maps in the cockpit that I just printed off the internet. So there we go my friends, it's nearly time to show you the finished model but before we do that I want to thank you guys ever so much for tuning in for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. And I'm going to say what I say pretty much on every Eddard uh, build I do is absolutely amazing, it's fantastic and absolute amazing detail. Um, I, it almost, <laughs> they don't often make it really hard for me uh, to sort of you know critique actually to make these videos and try and say something interesting uh but all you really need to know it's an amazing kit if you're into this kit and you've been looking at it it's definitely worth getting your hands on and building there is some really nice uh markings in there to choose from as well so again guys i hope you have enjoyed the video if you have and you haven't done so already please consider liking and subscribing to the channel if you'd also like to support the channel, there are links in the description down below. And finally, before we go to the finished model, myself and James from LPJ Models have set up a brand new uh, Facebook group. Now, it's the same as most of the groups where you post, you know, your, your builds and ask questions and ask for some advice and all that sort of stuff. It's the same as most other, um, you know, groups. But the one thing that we're really pushing to do and that we want to do is to help other channels and pages and, and and the likes even businesses you know to come over to our group and you know promote yourself um share your videos share your companies you know or even just promote your facebook page or instagram accounts or whatever you've got going on the page the group sorry is called uh, glue sniffers because because we we fell on that one and that's that's what we went for um but yeah so the link uh, for that is in the description uh, down below as well uh, so we like to uh, well we hope to see you guys uh, over there promoting yourselves and putting your channels or your you know your facebook groups or your businesses or whatever you've got uh, please you know come over to us and, and share that and help grow obviously grow the community but your own community as well so guys thank you ever so much i hope you've enjoyed and here's the first model